Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now, just to give Him the thanks right now. Just to give Him the praise right now. And always give Him the glory. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And He is so worthy, hallelujah. He is so worthy to be praised. Father God, this is the day that you have made. And I am so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Father God, we need you right now. Father God, you know every last one I need right now. You know every last one I concern is God. Father God, some of us right now today, God, we're going through some things right now. But God, we're not worried at all. Because God, we know that you have our back. Father God, we know that you are, you are fighting our battles, God. The war is already done. The war is already finished, God. But in despite of all of that, God, we are still giving you the thanks. We are still giving you the praise. And we always give you the glory. Father God, we know that you are still on the throne. We know that you are still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, you reign on your sons today. Father God, you reign on your daughters today. Father God, you reign on me today, God. Father God, allow your light, King, allow your light to continue to shine through my sisters, my brothers, even myself. Father God, you have your way with us right now today, God. Father God, we're going to continue to thank you and praise you, God, because praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. That's why I'm always lifting you up, Jesus. That's why I'm always praising you, Jesus. That's why I'm always glorifying you, Jesus. That's why I'm always shouting out your holy name today, Jesus. Because who you are, what you have done, and what you are doing right now today, you are so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Father God, you are so faithful. You are so awesome. You are so amazing, God. Despite what's going on with us right now today, Jesus, we are still seeking you and we're still praising you, God, because your word said, long that we seek you, God, we can find you, we can hear you, and we can listen to you. And Father God, in the midst of all that, we're still going to praise you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful, blessed day. I thank you for this opportunity, God. I thank you for everything that you've done. I thank you for everything that you're doing in our life. Father God, you have your way with us right now today, Father God. Father God, your word tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, where two or more gathered in your name. Hallelujah. There you are in the midst. Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now, our laptops right now, our desktops right now, even our iPad, God. Father God, whatever gadget that we have, whatever gadget that we're using, that we're watching, your service on YouTube, God. Father God, we ask you right now today, God, to speak to my sisters and my brothers right now today, God. Touch us and heal us, God. Father God, you know exactly what we're going through, God. And Father God, we know for a fact there's no but one person who can help us, God, and that's you, Jesus. Your word tells us in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, that we should cast all our troubles, all our anxieties, and troubles on you, God, because there's nobody cares for you, God. Father God, right now today, we are casting everything that's bothering us right now to you, Jesus. Father God, you have your way, and you do it in your way, God, and on your time, God. And Father God, we're going to sit right here and thank you and praise you, God. Say thank you because we know that you worked it out. We say thank you, Jesus, because we know that you have fixed it. We say thank you, Jesus, because we know that you have favor us in that situation, God. Father God, we want to say this thank you, Father God. Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. And Father God, we are praising and we are worshiping your house. We're giving you the glory in your house, God. Father God, you do your thing in your house, God. Father God, you uplift us in your house today, God. Father God, you do a new thing through my sisters and my brothers, even myself, in your house today, God. Father God, allow your spirit and your love to move and shift in your house right now today, God. Hallelujah. Father God, we can't do it and we can't make it without you, Jesus. So we need you right now. Father God, do something like you've never done before, God. 
Father God, we came in for a purpose. We came in for a reason. Father God, we ain't leaving your house to be leave here full and satisfied off your words and your promises, God. Holy Spirit, you moved to here. Holy Spirit, you moved to my sisters and my brothers right now today. Holy Spirit, you can you contact my brothers and my sisters today. Be connected with them today. And we give you all things, praise and glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, I'm coming to you right now today as a sinner, God. And I'm here today on the behalf of myself, my sisters, and also my brothers, God. I'm here to repent of my sins to you right now today, God. Father God, please forgive me. Please forgive my brothers and my sisters right now today. For anything we've done wrong, God, in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me. Please forgive my brothers and my sisters for anything we've done wrong, God, that was not set right in your heart. Father God, we do fall short. We do make mistakes, God. We do fall short of your grace each and every day, God. So, God, that's why we are here and we are repenting of our sins to you today, God. Father God, you ain't got to hear from nobody else. You ain't hearing it from the horse's mouth. And, Father God, I ask in your name right now today for forgiveness. Purify us through your blood. Wash us through your blood, God. Clean us through your blood, God. Wash us as white as snow. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us. Thank you, Jesus, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you enough for this word right now. I can't thank you enough for this anointing message right now. I can't thank you enough for the air that we're able to breathe right now. I can't thank you enough for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank you enough for your help and your strength. I can't thank you enough for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table, the clothes and shoes that you have put on our back. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, for your words. I can't thank you enough for your promises. I can't thank you enough for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I can't thank enough for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now today. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, how you making the way out of no way. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, how you healing us. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, how you providing. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for who you are, what you have done, and what you are doing right now today. Father God, I just can't thank you, Father God, in your house that we give you the thanks and praise and glory right now. Father God, I just can't thank you for your love. I can't thank you for your faithfulness. I just can't thank you for your energy. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the open doors. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the door that you have closed. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for a miracle. I can't thank you for our blessing. I can't thank you for our breakthrough. I can't thank you for our anointing. I can't thank you for our deliverance. I can't thank you for our double portion. I can't thank you for our more than enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the rain. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the connection. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the resources. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Good God Almighty Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. Amen. God is so good. Glory. Hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Can you please turn your Bible to Isaiah 54? And we're going to read verse 17. That's Isaiah chapter 54, and we're going to read verse 17, and if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen, amen. No weapon formed against you shall not prosper. Every tongue that accuses you, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. When God says, this is his vindication from who? From him, declares the Lord. He said, no weapon formed against you, my sisters, my brothers. He said, ain't going to prosper. So he gave me this, 
this word, and he gave me this anointing message last night, my brothers and my sisters. So they let you know I've been meditating on it for a whole day. And he gave me this word. He said, you must be doing something right because the enemy, the haters, and the doubters, they are still forming the weapons against you. He said, you must get it going on because they are still forming the weapons against you. He said, you must be too hot. He said, you must be too legit to quit because they are still forming, hallelujah, the weapons against you. He says, what if you ain't doing that? You ain't got to worry about the haters. You ain't got to worry about the enemies. You ain't got to worry about the doubters. Because the enemy and the haters and doubters can't form something of their own kind. But when you're doing something and you're doing something right, he said, you best believe this is going to happen. But he did promise us that it's not going to prosper. It don't matter what they say or what, how they say they're going to say it. He says it's not going to prosper because he's giving you his word. He said, this is the heritage of the what? The servants. We are the servants of, the, of Jesus, right? And this is their vindication. He said, this is their vindication. You're my brothers, yours, my sisters, even myself. They're coming from God. He said, declares the Lord. He said, it's never going to prosper. It's never going to work. Look at what they're telling everybody. They're going to leave you. They don't want to be with you no more. They want to separate. They want a divorce. So God said, what's the hold up then? you telling everybody you want a divorce. you telling everybody you want to separate. you telling everybody you want to leave. you telling everybody you want to be with him. you telling everybody you want to be with her, but you're still right there in the house. Why are you struggling the fence so much? Look at the haters continue to throw weapons at you. Say you're never going to work. You're wasting your time. But God said, don't even worry about that. You continue to do what you do. Can I go a little deeper with you? If you turn your Bible to James, chapter 1, say, Consider it pure joy when you face all kinds of trials and tribulations. So God is saying right now today, you should be happy that the enemy have his agents and his little minions right now today to attack you. You say, God said, you should be happy. You should be joyful that the enemy is using the wife and the husband to attack you. Because why? Them are trials and tribulations. Why? Because you are doing something right. And the enemy cannot stand when you're doing something right. The haters can't stand when you're doing something right. The doubters can't stand when you're doing something right. When you're doing something right in front of the Lord. And it pleases God. He said, now I can't stop the weapons from forming. He said, that's going to happen. Because why? Because you have a bond. You have a relationship. You have a commitment with God. See, right now today, my brothers and my sisters, you have a lifetime contract and, and a commitment with Jesus. And whenever that you have a lifetime contract and a commitment with Jesus, you're going to go through these situations. You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through tribulation. The enemy is going to attack. The enemy is going to use the one that's closest to you to hurt you and to, to try to break you down. The enemy will always use his agents. He will always use his minions to attack you. That's going to happen. No matter what. But Numbers 23 verse 19 says, I'm a man that I should not lie. If I told you that a weapon is not going to prosper, it's not going to prosper. If I told you that it's never going to work, it's never going to work. God said, I cannot go back on my words if I wanted to. So I'm telling you today, right now, my brothers and my sisters, I need you to get some peace with yourself. I need you to be at uh, relaxed with yourself. But most of all, Jesus told me to tell you right now today, he needs you to trust him because no matter what, how the weapons are coming at you. He said, I know they're coming from the north side. He said, I know they're coming from the east side. He said, I know they're coming from the west side. He said, I know they're coming from the south side. He said, I know they're coming from down bottom. He said, I know they're coming around the corner. But trust me, save the Lord. It's never going to work. Not so ever. He said, I know they schemes. I'm listening. I know they plotting. I know they telling everybody this. I know they telling everybody that. They might, they might can't tell you the truth, but I know the truth. I know they hard ain't right. But God said, I know they hard. You might not know it, but God said, I know they hard. God said, no matter what they try to do, 
it's never going to work. Because when you're doing something right, God will always fight your battles. The only thing that Jesus expects for me to do, for you today, my brothers, my sisters, is to sit back and trust him. And say, God, I don't know how you're going to do this. I don't know how you're going to work it out. I don't know how you're going to turn up. And I don't know how you're going to turn it out. But Jesus, I am trusting you right now today. Amen? Amen. If you want God to look deeper with you again. Look at Judas. Judas tried to perform the greatest weapon against Jesus. He betrayed him. Sold him out for, for a couple of coins because he wanted the bag. The weapon formed against Jesus, but did it prosper? No, it did not. Look how the enemy tried to attack Job. So when Job didn't, when Job didn't curse God and die, the enemy used Job's wife to break him down, to, to make him curse God out and die, but Job never did. Do you, do you not see how the weapon did not prosper? It formed in Job. It formed with Jesus. But it didn't prosper. So Jesus said, if it didn't form it, if it didn't prosper against him, and if it didn't prosper against Job, he said, it's not going to prosper against you. He said, go back on my word in Numbers 23. And I want y'all to read the whole Numbers 23, verse 19, when they said, I'm a man. I want you to be nothing else. But that one verse, I'm a man that I should not lie. That means he cannot go back on this word. That means he cannot go back on his promises. The point I'm making to you right now today, my sisters and my brothers, I expect you, Jesus expects you, continue to do the right thing. And I know it's hard right now. I know it's difficult right now. I know it's going crazy right now. I know it's looking ugly right now. I know it's confusing right now because you have seen these weapons form against you. You've seen how the, the enemy is attacking you. You are seeing how the haters are coming at you. You are seeing how the doubters and the naysayers are coming at you. And you are saying, Jesus, where you at? He said, you must be a bad man, my jama. You must be a bad boy. Look at it coming at you. Look what they're saying. They're trying to hurt you. They're trying to break you down, but you don't even realize how strong you are. I put you in that predicament for a reason, my brothers and my sisters, because I know that you can bear the pain. I know that you can bear the suffering. I know that you can bear the struggle. If you couldn't do it, I would never put you in that predicament. If Job couldn't do it, I would never put Job in that predicament. If you couldn't do it, my son, he said, I would never put you in there. He said, my daughter, if you couldn't do it, I would never put you in there. I put you right there because I want you to stay right there because I'm going to show you that I am hallelujah your God that goes before you stand with you and always will be beside you I'm your God who comforts you I'm your God who watches over you I'm your God that protects you and I'm your God that shields you no weapon formed against you it will never prosper it will never work and I know some people right now today, you forming all kind of weapons at these brothers and at these sisters. If you really want to go out of that man and that woman life, why are you still there? Why are you still hanging around? Why are you still striding the fence? Because you already know what's going to happen. You know, whatever it is that you're trying to do, it's going to ambush and hit you right back in your face. Some of you right now today, you ain't never had a good man and a good woman in your life. That man and the woman that God has put in your life right now today, that's the best thing that you ever don't have in your life. Now you listen to these haters. You listen to these ungodly people tell you this and tell you that. Now you're confused. Now you're straddling the fence because you know deep down in your heart the weapon that you're trying to form against him and her is never going to work. You know it. The haters, the reason why you were hating on that brother and the sisters because you already know they're already prosper. You wouldn't be hating on him. You wouldn't be hating on her if they ain't got it going on. You wouldn't be hating on him or hating on her if they weren't doing anything right. But the moment that you start doing something right, weapons going to fall. And I always talk to my niece about this because she always used this scripture a lot. And I, and I say, Naya, do you know exactly what, what it means? She said, oh, yeah, it's about faith with God. I said, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's part of it. But you got to have a relationship with Jesus for the weapon to even form. You got to have a bond with Jesus for the weapon to even form. You got to be committed to Jesus for the weapon 
to even for him. You got to be dedicated to him. You got to be hungry for him. You got to be thirsty for him. And she said, oh, God, I didn't know that. I said, yes, you got to think about that. You got to have a, a strong relationship with Jesus, a bond, a commitment, a dedication, a heart for Jesus for the weapons to form. Weapons ain't forming against anybody because everybody don't have a bond or relationship not committed to Jesus. You have too many people that straddle in the fence. You have too many people today that say they love Jesus, but the word of God tells us in the book of Isaiah and also in Matthew, Jesus said they love me from their mouth, but their heart is so far from him. So he already knows. So these weapons that's forming against you, it's a sign of saying that you got something going on, that you're doing something right. The weapon that's forming against you that lets you know that you're on the right path. The weapon that's forming against you that lets you know that you're close to your blessing and your breakthrough and your miracle, that you're hot, you're hot, you're hot, you're hot, my brothers, my sisters. Look how the weapons are still coming. Look how the agents are still attacking you. Look how the minions are still attacking you. But he said, consider that pure joy. He said, be happy, be rejoiceful that you're going through this. Because he said, everybody ain't going through those problems like you're going through. He said, everybody ain't, ain't suffering and struggling and going through these hardships like you're going through. But God said, but you are still right there in the midst with me, praising me and worshiping me. He said, everybody ain't built like that. That's why God said, I can't put too much on them. God said, I put a little sprinkle of dust on them, a little sprinkle of dust of pain. A little sprinkle of dust of suffering and struggle. He said, they'd take our run. They'd curse me out and die. But he said, I know that you wouldn't. I would never allow you to be in that predicament if you can if you can handle it. So the next time a person try to form a weapon against you, my brothers, my sisters, G said to sit down and just look at it and ignore it. I know we human. I know sometimes we want to run up our mouth. We feel like we got something to say. And that's normal. We're gonna do it. We gotta keep it real now. We're gonna be honest about the situation. But he say, why worry when you trust me? Why worry when I tell you it's never going to prosper? Why worry or cry about it or be confused about it when I tell you it's never going to work? Why even doubt me when I told you and I gave my word, says the Lord, I'm a man that I should not lie. I cannot go back on my word and I cannot go, go back on my promises if I wanted to. It's the lifetime contract and, and the commitment that we have with Jesus. And when you have that, weapons going to form. See, Jesus had a lifetime contract and commitment with his father. Do you see how the weapons formed against him? Judas was the main one, but it never prospered. Job had a lifetime contract and commitment with Jesus. Do you see how it happened? Adam had a lifetime contract and commitment with God. Do you see how the enemy tried to take him out? But it didn't prosper. It didn't work. So he's telling you right now today, it's never going to work. And I know right now today, it seems like the enemy is winning. The enemy was hitting you all kind of shots. One minute they want to be with you, the next minute they don't. They flipping and flopping and flopping and flipping all the time. One minute you don't know they're coming. Next minute you don't know they're gone. But you got God say, always be aware of the enemy schemes. Because that's how the enemy does. He's in and out. Out of, out of, the, out of the, the puppet's um spirit. That's what it do. See, the enemy is strong now. Don't get me wrong. But he have no control over you unless he get permission from God. So he can't do nothing to you. So these attacks that's happening is because God is allowing the enemy to touch you just to see what's going on because God already knows how it's going to work out. It's already done. It's the cake already been baked. It's already in the mix. They already have the candles on it. All you got to do is say this blow it out. So God said this, sit still and watch me and watch how I turn it out for you. Watch me and see how I work it out for you. Watch me. But most of all, he said, trust him. Trust him. Because you're doing something right. And he told me that last night. He said, son, you got to be doing something right. Look how the enemy is still attacking you. Look how the enemy is still using your wife against you. She in and out. She flipping. She flopping and flopping and flipping. One minute she don't know this. Next minute she don't know that. But you'll stay right there cool. That she had the nerve to ask you. Why are you not worried about it? Why are you not upset? So I said, because God got me. Why should I be worried? Why should I be upset? Why should I be confused when I know the cake has already been baked? 
when he told me I ain't got to worry about nothing, that everything is already okay. Because why? As long as I continue to seek him and trust him and put my faith and hope in him, he said, I, he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never do me wrong. He said in John 15, verse 5, that I can ask anything in his name. Good God Almighty, help me with this, Jesus. And he said that he will do it. But the main thing, what I love the most, I best about my God, about your God, my sister, my brother, is Numbers 23, verse 19. I'm a man that I should not lie. Now, the human man going to lie to you. But he said, I'm your spiritual man. I'm your father. I'm your friend. I'm your healer. I'm your protector. I'm your answer. I'm everything that you need and more. I will not lie to you. I cannot go back on my word. You and not, we have a bond. You and not, we have a connection. We have a commitment. And we have a lifetime contract with each other. He said, I can't break that. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend might break that. Your husband and your wife might break that. Your so-called friends might break that. Your parents might break that. Your, your grandparents might break that. Your uncles and your aunts might break that. Your son and your daughters might break that. Your brothers and your sisters might break that. Your co-workers might break that. Your family members might break that. Your in-laws might break that. Your neighbors might break that. The people in the church might break that. But God said, I cannot break that if I wanted to. Good God Almighty. He said, continue to do good and continue to do things the right way. Then he said, consider it pure joy. A lot of agents and the me continue to attack you and bother you. They let you know one thing, my brothers and my sisters, that you're doing something right. You continue to do something right because no weapon formed against you, it shall not prosper. It ain't never prosper. It ain't never work. Because why? You have a lifetime contract and a commitment with Jesus. I'm going to say that again. I want y'all to get this while I'm telling you right now today before I close. You, my brothers, you, my sisters, even myself, serving Minnesota LT, we have a lifetime contract and a lifetime commitment with Jesus. And he said he would never break that. He loved you too much. He would never go back in his word and he would never do you wrong. And if you believe that from your hearts of hearts, I want you to give Jesus some praise. I want you to give Jesus some glory in the house right now today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today by us praying that simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is Withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek Him. Always honor Him. Always praise Him. Know for a fact that you have a lifetime contract and commitment with Him. He will never go back in His Word. He will not break His bond with you. His Word is His bond. And you got to believe that. He's telling me right now today to let you know, don't worry about nothing else no more. Trust Him. You can't worry and trust Him. You can't worry and know that God, that you and God have a lifetime contract and commitment. That means that you are breaking it because he is not. He ain't going to go back on this word, so you shouldn't go back on your word. You stand still and you wait. Don't make a move. You wait. You wait on God because he's already arranged everything, God. It's already done. The cake already been baked. You might not see it yet and you might not be aware of it yet. God is telling me right now today the battle is already done. It's already won. Victory is already yours. You need to claim victory right now. I need you right now today to high five some people right now today and say victory is already mine. The cake's already been baked. Even though the enemy was forming weapons against me, it never worked. It never prospered. It never stand, uh, uh, never stand a chance against me. And the reason why it didn't stand a chance against you is because of your commitment, your contract that you have with Jesus. Look at Judas. He didn't stand against him, now did he? He went around. He felt so good that he killed himself. Mad. Ashamed. Look at Job's wife. She did the same thing. She was telling Job she didn't love him no more. She didn't want to kiss him no more. She didn't want to make love to him no more. But the whole time, why she didn't leave? She was still right there. 
because she knew what time was. Hosea wife did the same thing. Chasing out the lovers, want another man, but the man never chased out the her until the light bulb went off. She said, I better, I'm better off staying right here with my husband, who is faithful, who is lovable. What happened? The weapon never formed against him neither. It never. You got the enemy. The enemy didn't go out to Adam, it went out to Eve. Because why? The enemy already knew it was not going to stand a chance to get him. And God was telling you right now today, it's never going to stand a chance to you. You are built for tough, or you are strong enough. That's why God is allowing the attacks. That's why God is allowing the enemy to use his agents and his minions to attack you. But you stand in faith and say, God, I know that you got this. And you do got it. Victory is yours. Continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them or not. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen them before. Continue to pray. Prayer changes things and prayer helps. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers, my sisters. I just ask y'all guys to continue to keep me in prayer too. This is Seven Minutes of LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy name, victory is yours. Stay blessed. Amen. <laughs>